Thank everybody for tuning in. Of course, we are here. We are here, man. We got my boy about to tap in soon. Mr. JR. JR Bremer. He about to tap in with us just now, man. Seven o'clock, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a go back out and come back in. So everybody, oh, he's already here. He's already here, fellas. He's here. He's he's early. He is early. He is here early. My Yo, God, what's, up, man? what's good, bro? Man, I can't call the same old, same old. Yeah. Yeah. How you guys holding up out there, man, in Cleveland, man? Huh? Man, we struggling out here, for real, for real. Can't get out of yeah? the house, can't do nothing, but it's getting better now. Okay, okay. Yeah, things, things, are, things, are, things are loosening up where people are, 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 like, walking in the streets and everything? Yeah, we walking gyms and stuff, opening back up, so now I can get in there with my guys and get some workouts okay. or something, man. Everything been closed down, so. Okay, okay. We ain't doing much. Brother, first, first, you know, I want to thank you, of course, man, for taking your time, man. To come and sit down with me, brother. You know what I mean? This means a lot to me and the brand of Hip Hop Hoops. You know what I mean? Known you for a very, very long time. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, known you for a very long time. So, you know, this means this means a lot, brother. You know? Man, I appreciate you having me, man. I'm always supporting my guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, we've been knowing each other for a long time, man. Yes, so sir. Anything you got going, I'm always with it. And you, and you and you and you know like Toronto's like that's like your second home, bro. Yeah, man. I, <laughs> yeah, especially back in the early two thousands. Yeah, out there. <laughs> yeah, coming straight from Oli Yen. Right, right, man. Okay, we are gonna get right into it, brother. You know, I know a lot of people. Um, they want to know a few things, man. So you okay. you were requ you were requested, of course. You know. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "How much times I beat? How much times you beat me?" <laughs> That's my that's my that's my partner right there. Yo, we never we never actually played one on one. We just we played did. yeah, we never actually played like just one on one. But we played you know, played like team games and stuff. Right, like that. right, so, right. Nah, one um, on one. Yeah, you know. I would have posted you up though. Facts. Yeah, I just would have filed you, made you take me back out, you had to do it all over again. <laughs> Yo. Okay, well, tell tell me tell us about like the kind of player JR was in high school, man. Take us take us through that whole thing with high school with you, man. Through the whole thing, I um, it was a it was a it was a slow process coming through high school. To be honest with you, because coming into my freshman year, I probably was like five foot five and ninety mm. pounds. Okay, I, mean, I wasn't I wasn't uh, high on everybody's list for basketball. I mean, my my middle school coach didn't think I was gonna make make my high school varsity team. So I started out as my freshman year playing freshman. My sophomore, I played sophomore. But every mm. year I got better and better. I kept working. I hit a little growth spurt between my sophomore and my junior year. Right. And in my junior year, we won our we won the state championship, and I just played. I'm saying I played a a big role in it, but I was also just a role player. Like I wasn't the one that was going to shoot any ball. I was a distributor and and uh, get everybody else involved. And if I'm open, I shoot it. In my senior who, years, who the hell I, was the guy on the team? Who was who was the man on the team? If you weren't, absolutely, I wasn't. I was I was like the fourth or fifth option we had we had some really good, <laughs> really good players on that team man and jamal harris and theo dixon them two went they went d1 they were some real dogs you know what i'm saying okay. our whole team had a dog mentality that's what mm. but that's what took us over the top that year and then that next year is when i really got to let loose and and open my game up and and i'm saying do everything that i wanted to do it was free range for me green light mm. so so when you when you say was that was was it your senior year where 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 you made your name like like what were, were you, like were you a third like a three star four star coming out of high school? Um uh, man, I probably wasn't even a three star. I, no? I, I don't I don't think so. Thinking back, but I had a I had an incredible senior year. But after mm -hmm. that year, we won the state championship. My junior year, I signed early. Oh, you signed early? Up, yeah, St. Bonaventure came at me, and I guess they saw something in me that the other colleges or other people hadn't seen or didn't want to believe that they saw. So I signed before my senior year. And how how was the recruiting year. process? Was that was that one of the bigger schools that were after you? Yeah, that was one. I had I had some of the max schools around here in Ohio, okay. but that was one of the the one of the bigger schools in the in the, the biggest conference in the Atlantic Ten. You know, yeah, they Atlantic got 10. some really really good teams in the Atlantic Ten, and I knew I was going to come in there and be able to 
to play my freshman mm. year, I was going to be able to contribute instead of having to go somewhere and sit down and wait one or two years and then maybe get, get to play. I knew my freshman year I was coming right in there and playing. So for me, it was a no-brainer. And then That's after fun. my senior year, a lot of the big-name, big-time colleges started coming. But that um, was too big, late. But it was, it was too late. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm a loyal type of dude, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Don't, don't come after me when you see all the hoop, the glory, and all that stuff. Like, yeah. You, you, had this, you saw it in me before. It just you didn't want to believe you saw it or whatever, whatever your reasoning was. So I stuck with safety. Right. Okay. So, so let me ask you a question. This, like who, who was a player that you looked up to? Like, like who was a, who was a player like maybe in the NBA locally that you patterned your game after, man? Mm. Cause you, 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 you're, you're, you're a shooter, man. You, you're, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people a shooter. don't, like, a lot of people don't know that, man, especially from, really? when I've been playing overseas my last 11 to 12 years. They, you couldn't, they wouldn't believe you if you said I was a shooter or a scorer. They thought I was a pure point guard, like a pass first point guard. Really? So, you know, the, your game evolves depending on what what your needs are from your coach and, and what your needs are from your team. So, mm -hmm. like I said, when I come home and I tell them, like, man, I'm a pure point guard over overseas, they was like, man, you crazy. You don't pass <laughs> at all. You know what I mean? Like, you shoot every chance you get. I'm yeah. like, man, two different worlds, two different, two different games. Fuck. That is crazy. Okay, so when you uh, take us through the St. Bonaventure, so you, you go there as a freshman. Mm -hmm. You you invite Delaware freshman at the same time, right? Yep, same time. Okay, invite Elton. Okay, okay. Uh, Elton, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> so yo, t take us through just the 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 whole the whole college career. Did you play in the NCAA tournament? Yep, I played you one year. Senior year, sophomore, right? Sophomore, sophomore year. Okay, so yeah. just take, just take us through the whole thing, man. Like. A lot of a lot of kids that you know um, that I teach and you know they're around me all the time. They want to know like how hard is it for the, to play Division One? You know, as far as the, um, the strength and you know what yeah. not. What 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 are the things that what shocked you when you got to St. Bonaventure, man? I would the, the beginning part, the strength and lifting, the strength and conditioning. Strength and lifting. It's like it's it's a whole nother level. Like you you mm. don't really do much, especially in the high schools. You don't lift much weights. You know, you're nah. really pushing you to lift much weights. You don't have a strength trainer and things like that. Mm -hmm. Once you once you get to college, that that summer, it's like you pushing heavy weight, or you you better learn how to push heavy weight, or you're gonna get embarrassed out there in front of in front of all your all your people, or whatever. So that was, the, that was the biggest thing biggest thing for me is to is to make that transition about how much weight lifting that we did and how much training in the off season that we did, and then yeah. after that first year, you know what I'm saying, it became second nature, and I and I accepted it. Like it was like it was something like it was my job, and then I and I did it the right way. But I, I think I think that's what that was one thing for me. Like when I came to St. Bonaventure, mm -hmm. you guys, you were you were my host, you and Vi, right? So it was right. like um, it was crazy because when we were playing, we were playing pickup, and we were just playing, you know, whatever mm -hmm. up and down. I can just feel the strength was so different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is why yeah. guy just leaning on me. I'm like, damn, this nigga. Like he's right. pushing. Like why is he fouling? <laughs> and I was like, yo, shut up, bro. Like that's you know, that's what you gotta do. Right. So. That's that's good defense. You gotta be able to get, <laughs> you gotta be able to go through that and and, and and feel that contact and still go through it. Yeah. So so how were your stats looking the freshman year, man? Freshman year, mm. uh I was fortunate enough that something that happened, I mean, it wasn't fortunate for him, but for me personally, one of our guards had um had an injury problem and got into some stuff with their with their with their foot. So I was able to come in and really contribute, like, more minutes yeah. than I even thought I was. So I averaged about nine and a half mm. points in my freshman year, which is, you know what I mean, it's just, which is which is, which is is something that's really good. Yeah. And coming into my junior year, we had a good freshman year, freshman team, and then all those guys came back for for the next year. And that's when we made our, our NCAA, tournament, mm. NCAA tournament run. And I got hurt, actually, like, probably one or two weeks into the season. I broke a bone in my foot, and I was going to be out six to eight weeks. Yeah. And there was some some talk about red shirt and suggest, suggesting me just rehab and then come back the next year. We we'll still have my three years, but that's that's not something I wanted to do because I knew the team that we had and I knew I could play a, a vital role in that to to be something special. So I rehabbed mm -hmm. and I came back probably in like January and got into the rotation and was getting some significant minutes and we and we made the tournament. Mm. Take take us through that tournament, man, because I know. I know so many guys have played Division One, man. They went four years mm -hmm. and they didn't make it to the tournament at all. And I know that got to be a special, special, special moment. Marcus Green tapped in, man. Yeah, I yeah, see Marcus yeah. Green. Mark, what up, Mark? 
it's 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 extra it was extra special that year for me because the host was Cleveland State University. So I was coming back home. Oh to play in front of all my people to play in front of people that hadn't seen me bulk up and seen the strength and stuff that I had and everything like that. So that was uh it was really extra special. And we played we was the twelfth seed playing against Kentucky, the five seed, big big dogs, you know, so it was it was it was exciting and we it's the the atmosphere and everything is like no other. The convocation center down in Cleveland State, the whole twenty some thousand. It was wasn't an open seat in the arena. Oh to come on to the old bond adventure. We had on our brown and white jerseys, which was nasty, <laughs> but you know we can't we can't yeah. play. We yeah. can't play, man. We performed and we ended up losing in triple overtime. Mm -hmm. You know, we had we were up three with maybe eight seconds left in the game. Tayshawn Prince hit a clutch three, send it to overtime. Then we come back. We down three with eight seconds. David Cabers, he gets fouled on the three with no time on the clock. We're down three, no time on the clock. He got three free throws. He knocks down all three free throws. That's the whole crazy. arena looking at him. You know, he makes the first, first free throw. Tubby Smith, timeout. He got to go sit and think about it. Yeah. You know how long the TV timeout yeah. is. Time <laughs> get, get back up there. Take a shot. Second free throw. Knock it down. Time that is again. crazy. He took two timeouts? Again and think about it. Use two timeouts. Got wow. The third one. Cashed it out. And then, so that at this point, Everybody in the arena is cheering for us except for for the Kentucky following. You know, they got a huge following anyway. Yeah. But everybody else, they, yeah. they're going for us because our rival is Syracuse, and Syracuse would have been our next game. You know, so mm. Syracuse and Odeon and Bonner, they right. I wouldn't say rival, but they it's, don't it's, like it's close. Odeon don't like them, and I guess they don't like they don't like us. So mm. we just we just ran out of – I think we ran out of gas, man, triple overtime. It was – we put on a good fight. When you expend so much energy throughout the game – it's hard to keep that up versus a, versus a powerhouse team like that. Yeah, K Capers was good, man. Capers yeah, was man. real good, he had, man. He had it all. He was athletic and handle it and shoot it. He, yeah. He had, we had a really good team, and everybody knew their role. Our point guard was probably the best defender in the country on ball, Tim Wynn. Tim, Tim Wynn from yeah. Niagara Falls, we, right? Yep, from Falls. Yeah. We had Cy, who was holding it down on the block, and, and then anything that came in there, he was going to get or trying to block it. So it was a good – it was a good, it was a good uh, matchup, and Cy was going against McGlure. You know, both of them are, are Canadians. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so a bit personal at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, did did um did Habib play with you guys at the, at the, in that tournament? He, no, he didn't. He didn't. I think Q came out that next year. He was a freshman my junior year. Okay. Okay. So okay. In the in the NIT, he was in the NIT with us. Mm, so the next, so the following year, you guys made it to the NIT. The following two years, we made it to the NIT. Yep. Mm. So 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 tell me about the senior year, man. Your senior year, you know, you, what what you make first team all conference. First team all conference, uh, fourth in the nation in scoring. Mm. Uh, most. Um, what, what was the stats? What was the stats 20, looking like? Twenty four point two is what I averaged my my senior year. Senior year, right? Yeah. After mm. our junior year, you know, we um, Coach Barron was the coach that brought me in. He he brought us all together and said he was leaving to go to Rhode Island, I guess, for a better yeah. situation for himself and better situation for his family, living wise, and his and his two kids. Which you always got to respect that when you're trying to make the best for yourself and for your family. So, mm -hmm. a new coach, uh, Van Bredekoff, that came in. He came from Pepperdine, that in Cali. He just he came in with a shoot it. As long as you play defense, that's 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 my that's my focus. If you play defense hard, I don't mind you taking bad shots or good shots. You know what I'm saying? Like they said, all all good players be have to be able to make bad shots. That's just what yeah. it is. Like you don't see anybody <laughs> that's really really good not making bad shots. They bad shots, but you know what I'm saying. You practice them and you, and you make them. So he gave me, he really gave me the free reign to just go out there and just score pretty mm. much. So we we had a little um we went over to Europe for the preseason, played some prof played some professional teams over there in Germany and England like that, and I averaged like 40 points a game over there. Damn. So you, so you already made your name over in Europe before you actually started playing. I kind of – The kinda, buzz, I the buzz was made, there. Yeah, yeah, mm. the buzz, it was a little buzz. Yeah. I was, man, I mean, I, wouldn't, I couldn't even imagine scoring 40 points a game. I did it once in high school and once in AAU, but it was just, man, my teammates, they, you know what I'm saying, they was – feed me the right way. They were setting screen. We were playing the game the right way. It just wasn't me just forcing, just jacking, 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 jacking. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they, we all wanted the best for each other. And and uh, it brought us together a lot, especially with a new coach, a whole new staff, a whole new system. And our, wow. our last year, it's like, man, we got to start over. Mm -hmm. But he um, he incorporated the system really well, offensively and defensively, and we had a, we had a really good year. Okay. Let's go back, man. Cause I, I, uh, we never got to answer that question as far as like 
a player that you grew up like. Okay. You know, want yeah, to play I, like. I, I, I liked Isaiah Thomas a lot. Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas a lot, man. Watching him Small grow up, guard, I liked him. I, yeah, and I tried to model my toughness and stuff after him. Well, yeah, I was more of a tough. shooter, so I didn't. I'm saying I didn't have that part of his game, but I really followed him. He's probably one of the, he's probably my favorite player growing up. Mm, what, what, as in any like local guys, you would you would say like from around the way, Cleveland area. Um, yeah, the uh, Damon Damon Stringer. He was he was Mr. Basketball in Ohio. That's the best basketball player in Ohio, and our families mm -hmm. were really really close. Like his father and my father went to high school together, and they grew up together, so we were close. And he was. He was like really, really good from his freshman year all the way through his senior year. You know what I'm okay. saying? So I, would, I would pick his brain, try to learn stuff from him, and and um, and try to get any tips as I can from him. So following following behind him one or two years. So he's playing. I'm watching. I'm a freshman. He's a yeah. senior. He's playing. I see all that, and I just continue to mold myself and continue to try to be better. Mm, okay. All right. We we gonna move along with um after college now, man. Uh huh. You know? What what was how did how did everything fall because um okay you didn't get drafted nope and I, um so, so just take us through that whole process man because that's that's yeah. a process that you know a lot of people want to know how how it works man yeah that's a tough it's it's a long process strenuous it's I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a lot you got to do because you got to prepare for so many different things and you, at the whole time you're still in school you're still in college so you got to get your books and stuff done so yeah. Uh, I went to a lot of a lot of. Uh, let's start back from me. I just did a whole lot of working out. I came home for about a month and a half and and worked out with this guy named uh, Tim and Eric at Speed Strength, and they just really got me got me ready. They were producing guys in the NFL, guys to the NBA, so they knew what it took as mm -hmm. far as footwork and speed and weightlifting to get to get you ready. And then um, that's when the camps start coming up to Portsmouth and yeah. uh, Chicago and all that. And I skipped I skipped Portsmouth which uh, everybody told me is something that I shouldn't do because I really wasn't a big name. I wasn't high profile. And Chicago was really the high profile guys. But mm. I knew coming into it, the percentage of people coming from Portsmouth making it to Chicago was, was super low. So I might as well take my chance on super low, getting straight into Chicago so I can go compete against the, the, the so-called best of the best or whatever, whatever you want to do it. Mm -hmm. And I did that, and I had a really good, really good Chicago camp. I think I was probably 13 or 14 points a game, but you only, play, you only play two quarters. You don't play the yeah. whole game. So mm -hmm. I'm playing the, the second and the fourth quarter, like 14 points. So that went well, and that's when a whole lot of the workouts, workouts start coming in. So we go to a team. It'll be three other guys there. You just – y'all, you're doing, you're doing drill work, and then y'all playing one-on-one. -on -one. Then it's mm -hmm. drill work, then y'all playing one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm just – I'm going from city to city. Anywhere I can get in, I'm trying to get in. So I did about how, how many? How many? Uh, how many? How many? About, about 17 or 18 of them, Damn. which is unheard of because there's so much wear and tear in your body. You fly, you get there, you – you play, yeah. I'll go somewhere else, but you know, I'm trying to make a name for myself. I'm trying to get my trying to get my name out there. So this, the whole time, I'm chasing all the the big name guys, like you know the, the Juan Dixons, the the the, the um, Jason Williams, those guys, the Dan Dickows, mm. all those big name guys. I'm like, man, I need to go up against them so I can I can critique myself and see where actually where I really stand. They can see where I stand. The, the GMs and things like that. So. I was all over, and I had a lot of those. I went to Toronto twice. I came back to Toronto. It was the only team I did two workouts for. You so, thought you thought they th you thought they were gonna pick pick you I up? Thought, I thought it was over. I thought I, yeah. thought I was going there. I that would have been a match made in heaven, bro. Man, you came it would, out here. I, you would have. <laughs> I came back the day before the draft. It was me and the dude Chris Jeffries. He he, I forgot the name of the school he went to, and uh, I had talked to I had talked to Vince. He was there working out stuff stuff like that. So I really thought that it was gonna be. I thought they were going to draft me. I really thought mm. they were going to draft me because I had some really good workouts. But drafting came. I had a big draft party. Got the hotel room. Got the big suite. Invited everybody over because I knew. I said, I'm getting drafted. I know I'm getting drafted. Mm. That first round go by, my name don't get called. How you feeling at this time, man? I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I'm like, man, hold on. Something ain't right. Like, what's, what's going on? I did all these workouts. You know what I'm saying? I'm probably the only one that did that many workouts. So that's a lot. Teams, that's a teams, lot of workouts, man. It's a lot. It's a lot. Damn. So then we get we get midway through the um, second round. My agent is there. I'm like, man, what's going on? And he his phone started ringing, and probably probably around pick forty or something like that. They had already told me that I, nobody was going to draft me. Mm. Like, what you mean? nobody going to draft me? There's twenty picks left. I still got a chance, but yeah, you know, they know that they, they know it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so at this point, we're already. I'm 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 distraught. Like I leave. I'm crying. 
because I done had a whole draft party thinking I'm going to get drafted, and then no. it, it didn't happen. But they they say it's better at that time. It was better not to get drafted in the second round. Mm -hmm. And then to get, it's better to not get drafted and be free to go wherever you want to go than get drafted and be stuck with one team. And with that right. one team, there's nothing you can do. They own your rights. So whatever you try to do, they, they got all your rights. So that just made me work that much harder, grind that much more to go to to summer league. So now now it's summer league time. So now Okay, so you don't so you don't get drafted. Now oh. summer league. So how do you decide which summer league you wanted to go to? Like which team? The, the teams they, they you call in, you try to you try to pick your best fit. Which ones say they're gonna play you play you more, which one's gonna let you be you, mm. uh give you the freedom to play. So I had um I went to I had went to Toronto. Not I didn't go, but I confirmed with Toronto. I confirmed with Memphis, and I confirmed with Minnesota. Right. That's three. It's uh the at when that time at the time in Memphis, the summer league was in L.A. So mm -hmm. then you, they had one out there. Then we would I would leave. Toronto's I think was in Utah. Utah. Yep. And Minnesota's mm -hmm. was was in Vegas. It, it wasn't. It wasn't Vegas. Orlando. Orla oh yeah, Orlando. Orlando. Okay. Orlando. Mm -hmm. So I go to Memphis. I'm thinking that's gonna be a good fit too. First two games, I don't get I don't get a second. Mm. Like if you you get promised that you're gonna play, then you don't get a second. I'm like, oh man, I don't know. I don't know Craig. Craig, my agent, he he called me, he was like, I'ma talk to him. The third game came, I still didn't play. So I get on the red eye at about one o'clock in the morning. I'm I I I'm gone. We fly to Boston. We talk to Boston. Boston said he can come in here. Cause I for two days, and then I had to go to Minnesota. But Memphis called like, "Where's Jr. at?" I told my roommate Fred House, "Like I'm going, Fred." And they called with Jr. and he, like he was gonna play these next couple games, but that I didn't have time to go off of was was gonna play. Like I thought I was, I thought I was gonna be playing the first three games. Yeah, yeah. I left there, went to Boston for two days, did some workouts or whatever, and then I had to leave and go to Minnesota. So in the middle of that, in the middle of that training camp. I fly to Minnesota for two days because Boston wanted me to play in their summer league that they had in Boston. They had they actually had one in Boston. So I go to mm. Minnesota, had a great, great two days in Minnesota. I played out my mind probably better than I, I could thought I could play. But mm. now it's time for me to leave to come back to Boston. I only got three days in Boston because I told Toronto I was coming to play in their summer league in three days. <laughs> right. So you know, I'm all over the place. And I'm just trying to get it in as much as I can, wherever Yo. I can. Three days I'm going to take. I'm taking advantage of it. So we go to Boston. I play two games at Boston. I get, I go home. They, they thank me. Play, I played solid. You know what I'm saying? My biggest thing was defense. Like at that, at this point, I was picking you up 94 feet. As soon as you turn around, I'm standing right there. Yeah. That's how I was in Chicago. That's how I was in the summer league. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, make, <laughs> I'm gonna make myself stand out. Everybody can shoot it. Don't nobody want to play defense like that. Especially no. 94. As soon as you there, and I'm turning. It ain't like I'm just there and like, all right, you do whatever you want to do. I'm really making you work. So I get to my hotel room. I'm packing up. I'm going to Toronto, which I still think I still think I got a shot at Toronto. Mm. And Boston, Boston called me that night, like, I want to offer you a two-year contract. Mm. I signed it. And then I did not. We called Toronto and said, hey, Boston offered this contract. We're about to sign it. Thank you for the, for the offer to come play in the summer league. But uh, he's going to be a Celtic. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man. That and is I, crazy. I didn't, no I didn't do no workouts for Boston. I didn't have any conversations for Boston. I was one of the few teams that I did nothing for. And that's the team that, that offered me the contract, which is, that is it's, crazy. It's, it's crazy how things work. <laughs> wow. That is wild. 17 workouts. 17 workouts. I was over the East Damn. Coast, the West Coast, the Midwest, down South. I was everywhere, man. That is wild. I really was, I really, I really was everywhere. It was, it was only a couple of about today, ten teams that I didn't work out for. Wow! So Celtic, you you were a Celtic. Celtic. You signed as a Celtic, two year deal. Take us through that first year, man. That rookie year. Who's on the team with you, man? Okay, yeah, the, I signed a two year deal, but the second year was non guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And the first year was only would only be guaranteed if I made it to January. Mm -hmm. So it's just like it's like different levels that you got to get to to make make your contract be fully guaranteed so okay. people, you can see people that sign contract but that don't that don't mean if you get if i got cut in december that two years is gone i don't get a penny from nothing yeah so, i think it, i think that's where a lot of people get it confused when, yeah, when they see yeah. okay you sign a two-year deal right and then like oh you're good it's, it's right. all it's done uh -huh. and they don't understand that there's right. different levels that's okay you, that's why you see so many people getting cut 
right before January or right before the yeah. our break. Cause that's when them that's when they become guaranteed. <laughs> you cut you like, nah, we ain't we ain't keeping that on the book. So yeah. I get into Boston, Antoine Walker there, all star, Paul Pierce there, he's another all star, superstar, both of them. Uh Eric Williams, Tony Batte, Walter McCarty from Kentucky, mm. Tony Delk from Kentucky, Van Baker, who was an all star. So we you know I'm saying it's a pretty high that's profile a solid team, team. Yeah. Really, really high profile team. And I just come in there and continue to do what I what I was doing in the in the in the summer league and in the preseason. It's just playing as hard a defense as I can. You know what I'm saying? Being able to play my role and and and, and I did that. I was probably the twelfth, thirteenth man on the bench. But when I come in there, I'm coming there to work and 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 to show that I want to be higher than twelfth, thirteenth man. I want to be able to play some significant minutes. So I would say the first thirty five games, I maybe played eight minutes total. You know I'm saying I was the player that is 30 seconds on the clock. Y'all down 35. They are going to get them. <laughs> so the coach start walking down the sideline. You put your head down. You don't want to go to the game with 30 seconds. Man, you down 30. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. I was, that, that was me. And then when you get in there, they, they encourage you, all the veterans, shoot, shoot, shoot. So I done sat 47 minutes and they want me to come in there and shoot NBA threes. So, like, so as, like it should be, I probably was shooting about 13% from the three when you look at my three-point percent. I'm like two for 18 or something crazy. Yeah. Like, 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 I'm a shooter, Rook. <laughs> yeah, I am a shooter, but I just, I just can't come in there and just knock down threes. I'm sitting for 47 minutes. Yeah. So, that, was, that, was the, that was the beginning of it. That was yeah. the beginning of it. But they always told me. They, always, they said, man. This this league, you got to be ready. You always have to be ready because something's going to happen. Somebody's going to get hurt, unfortunately, or the coach is going to make a decision, and he's going to call your name. But he's only going to do it once. Mm -hmm. you know he's going to do it once. So you got to be ready at all times. So I in practice, I always prepare to be ready, to be ready. But after probably about 25 games, I'm like, ah, man, I'm trying to be ready. But you know what I'm saying this ain't this ain't where it's at, just sitting on this bench like that. Like, I'm blessed to be here, but I don't want to play. I got to, you know what I'm saying? I love the game. Plus you, so, plus you gotta, plus you gotta honor the contract, like you know. Right, right. Yeah. Right, right. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing my job, and I'm a professional. I'm one of the 300 players in the world that's in the NBA. So I ain't, I'm not, I wasn't complaining about it. It was just like, you know, you got the love for the game, and you really not getting out there to play. So, um, I remember like it was yesterday. We on the road trip, and we're playing San, we playing Houston and San Antonio. We play Dallas, and then we go to play Houston and San Antonio back to back. Right. Dallas game. That's with Nick Van Exel. Dirk, all them, we getting pounded. We down probably about 25. <laughs> now, you know, I knew I was going in at some point. We down there, probably about a minute 30 left. We come down. JR, go get them. So I'm in there, and I'm going as hard as I can. You would think the game was tied or about to go in overtime. It's down two or three. I'm going hard. Mm -hmm. It's a loose ball. I dive on it. Full court. I'm running. I dive on it. Throw it to my teammate. He get a dunk. I don't think it's much of nothing, but the coaching staff the whole time thought thought it was really something. You know what I mean? So that next day, this was around the time where when you get cut, you're about to get cut and your contract ain't guaranteed. That next day I get a the call. They say, Coach wanna see you in his office. So I'm going, I already know I already know what it is. Like, man, I'm about to get cut. It's mm. about that time. So I go in the office, like Jerry, I wanted to sit down and talk with you. I'm gonna start you next game. I said, huh? He said, I'm, I'm going to start you. Next <laughs> so I went from not playing a second to starting having to guard Steve Francis the next game. This is when you allowed. Crazy. This is when you was allowed to have all the hands, uh, the hands yeah. that they went calling to carry. I got to guard the <laughs> next game. But I'm loving. I get. I get to play. So he gave me a nice twenty ball, probably. <laughs> it was. It, it yeah. was easy, but. I played well. I played my role, sit in the corner, bring it up, get in the corner, spot up. When they double Twan or, or Paul, be ready to knock down a shot. What, 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 would you say Francis was the hardest guy you guarded? Hardest guy the I guarded. Rookie, rookie year, he was, the, yep. he was the toughest guy. He was the toughest because they would, they would, that's when they let you carry on your hezzy. So and he was, doing, you all, he was up, doing all of that, right? All that. You stand up, he just blowing by you. But if yeah. you don't, he's going to knock that jumper down because he's getting to his spot. So he was he was probably the toughest I, the toughest I had to guard. And in mm. the very next game – I matched up versus Tony Parker. Damn. So, you know what I'm saying? I got two <laughs> incredible <laughs> points that I matched up against my first two games starting. And, mm. I, and I played well, and I continue to start for the rest of the season, all mm. the way probably until probably to the second to last game of the year. 
That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So it was a like I said, it was it was a process. You just had to you had to continue to work, continue to grind, continue to believe in yourself and you know what I'm saying, continue to work hard. That was my biggest thing. Like I was wasn't nobody gonna outwork me. You like mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want. I ain't playing, but no nobody's gonna no coach is gonna say, Well, he outworked him or that was from high school to college to to the NBA. Like there's none of my coaches, even in overseas, they they're gonna tell you like one of his best attributes is how hard he goes, how hard he works at everything he do, not just offensively, but but defensively as well. Who who was the coach, man? Somebody, somebody got a question for you. Who was the coach at that time? Jim O'Brien. Jim O'Brien. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He was big. He was big on three point shooting guards. Mm. He had Tony Dell who could really shoot it. He had Shaman Williams from UNC who could really shoot it. Yeah. You yeah. needed you needed guys to space the floor out when they doubled Paul and Antoine, who was two was two all stars. So. He really gave me the confidence and the green light to, to do what I wanted. Like if I got the ball and I'd be running pick and roll play, and the dude and the guard goes under, it's like yeah, you better shoot it. Mm -hmm. Okay, where you at? If he goes under your screen, that's you better shoot it. So that type of confidence your coach gives you, like you got two all stars, but you better shoot this ball. Or you coming out if you don't shoot when they go that's under crazy. the screen. So you know what I'm saying? That that really that really played a huge part in my success. I ended up making the second team all rookie mm -hmm. playing only that half of the season from February. That is playing who was months. on that who was on that team with you? Second team all rookie, bro. Second team was me, uh Ginobili, That is crazy. Boozer, Gordon Gearsick, and I don't remember I don't remember who else. And then the first yeah. team was Jason <laughs> Williams, Yao Man, Damari Stardemeyer, Drew Gord, Drew Gooden, Karan Butler. So that first team was loaded. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah, Look at that yeah. process you just told me. 17 were getting undrafted mm -hmm. out of our first thought out of a small school, you know, mm -hmm. or mid mid major, yeah. you know, going having a great senior year, going undrafted after working out 17 different places, mm -hmm. playing summer league back and forth all over, mm -hmm. getting that call from 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 uh, Boston, not playing no minutes, right? <laughs> Start, <Starting>. yeah. <Great. laughs> It's crazy, man. It, that is crazy. Yeah, it all looks good. It looks good for everybody that can see, that can see the end result. Yeah, that, that that middle piece they don't they don't see that 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 grind in high school when when you're playing <laughs> freshman as a freshman, sophomore as a sophomore, everybody just looking over you. Ain't got you don't have any stars, nothing like that. And then you go to a small mm. college, ah, it's only only got three thousand kids. And then you, you come out, and we end up beating UConn at UConn, who hadn't lost at their spot to a non-conference team in fifteen years or something ever. Like yeah, it's like. That, that that type of stuff a lot of people don't see. The work mm. just gets put in behind the closed doors and what you got to go through to get to the success level that you want to get through. Because it ain't it's a bumpy road, man. It's not easy. No, no. Wow, that 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 is incredible, incredible. Wow, I I, I know you for so long. I didn't even know this, man. <laughs> yeah, man. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I only seen the Celtics. Like, yo, my man made second team all rookie, yo. Yeah. Okay. So so. Wow, I'm I'm in awe with that. That is yep. crazy. Yep. And and it, and it was it was shocking because I only played three months, man. I mean, not even three months. February is when I middle of January when I started. Playing, you know the season. Yeah, over yeah. We got the All Star break the short month of February, so it was a, a short time. But they put me in a position, wow. man, to succeed. The coach he really put me in a position to succeed to my mm. strengths, which which was shooting and playing defense at that time. What? what okay, and um. What what would you say was the biggest highlight for you, as the, as that rookie? You know, because I remember I remember I remember you. I don't. I I want to say it was Celtics when you, when you hit a buzzer beater. I don't know if you remember that. I think it was uh, against the Wizards. I think it was against the Wizards oh, yeah. when you hit that buzzer it like, beater. It was like it was like three. It was like three seconds left. It, it take wasn't, take that, us through that. It wasn't at the butter the buzzer, but that's that's a whole other crazy story in itself. So take us was, through that, man. I was starting up to like I said, I got the starting job, and I was starting all the way up until that game. But that's when playoffs was getting ready to start. We were preparing for the playoffs. And Coach O'Brien, he didn't start rookies in the playoffs. Mm. That was just something that he that's something that he did. So he came to me was like, I'm gonna bring you off the bench, the yard. I'm and he said, Ain't nothing that you did, it's just you know I wanna go with veteran guards to start the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? It's a different atmosphere, different monster. So, okay, I respected it. I took it and I and I and I came off the bench. He had started Tony Depp. And that that probably was one of my better games. I ended up with like twenty one, twenty two points that game off the bench and uh all you could hear was like Antoine them screaming man tell them to start your rook tell them why you mad <laughs> tell them why you mad on the court they talk a lot on the court you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't saying that they ain't my, I can't say nothing but I let yeah. 
and um, we was down, we was down two, and uh, this was Jordan's last year, and he was he need they needed that game to win to go to the play to to, be, to have a chance to make it to the playoffs. If mm. they lost that game, it was, that was it was gonna be out, right? By the number numbers wise, so we um we down we down two and. Paul has the ball about to go with his with his game to, to shoot a game winner or to tie it up. And my guy Tyrone Lou, he decided to go help a little bit. Paul take one dribble and he kissed it to me and without without even thinking about it, unconsciously I let it fly. And, mm. and, and, and I hit it. That's crazy. Yeah, and that was I mean that was that was the game winner. It was still a little bit of time on the clock, but they didn't they got a shot off, but it didn't it didn't come close to going in. Mm. My partner got a question for you, yeah. man. He wanna um let me see. If you could say one thing that's different from a regular season game and a playoff game, what would it be? The atmosphere, first of all, is is crazy in the playoffs. Like yo, your, your arena, everybody has a white towel. So the whole arena <laughs> is white. Live is white the whole time. That's that was that was the first thing. And then the second thing, every single play matters. Like sometimes every single in, play. In, in the regular season, you take some plays off. You would take some some defensive 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 possessions off, some offensive possessions off, but there, like everything matters because all them little points count. You're not gonna be scoring them transition layup that you were getting in the regular season because they locking down, they taking better mm. shots, they uh crashing the board, they getting back. The scouting report is done. So that that the atmosphere and playing every possession like it's the last is the biggest the biggest difference. Mm. Did did you did you notice how that they were playing you different differently in the in the playoffs? Like you know how they have their scout report. Yeah. Could you, yeah, could, they, you could you notice when you were playing like man, this guy's not I, letting me get I to my spot. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I, can feel it. I bring it up sometimes, or or Paul is bringing it. But normally my guy, he's the one that's helping off. Like he he's giving space, and so I got a lot of room to catch and shoot. But now at this time he ain't he's not giving as much space. And now now I'm labeled a shooter. Like don't leave him. Yeah, He's a shooter. So you got to be careful with him. So you can feel the difference in the physicality with it. The refs let you play more and, <laughs> and things like that. You know what I'm saying? My we played we played our first round. We played Indiana, Indiana, which was a, which, which, was, which was a great series. You know they 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 rugged. They was they played hard. That was, was that was that, our, was that Ron Artest? Okay, Ron Artest, Artest. Al Harrington, Jay O'Neal, mm. Jamal yeah. Tansy. So they had a great team. We won we we won that round and ended up playing the Nets. That was with Jason Kidd, Kerry Kittles, Kenyon. Was, was, was Vince on that team? No, -uh, Vince wasn't on that one. Okay, Vince was still in that Toronto was, then. Yeah, he was still in Toronto. That was okay. that was Oops City, and they played extremely hard too. We ended up losing losing that series, but just to be able to be matched up against J Kid mm. and playing against him, who wasn't the quickest guy that I guarded, but he gets he got wherever he wanted to get to. Yeah, crazy. footwork and, and brain was crazy. Wow. So that was that. So that's your all that happened in year one for you. Yep, all that happened. <laughs> in year, all that happened in year one. Year two. Year how two. does it, how does it go? Because how many how much years you played two years in Boston? Two one year in Boston, then I went to Cleveland. And I came home the next year. Okay, take so, us through that and how, and how that all happened, huh? We finished the season. Uh, we made it to the second round, which is um, accomplishment and was an accomplishment in my eyes. But then we had a new we got a new GM, and um, they they felt that they wanted to be to go further than the second round. You know what I'm saying? Their expectations was a lot higher, so he right. made some changes. That happened. We played summer league, which you got to play your first two years. So um, first game was, was versus LeBron versus the Cavs. We um, he has twenty seven. I have twenty nine. Some 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 like that. Because now mm. it's summer league. Now it's my team. I can you can I can do whatever I want to do. I'm, <laughs> I'm the Paul or whatever because it's my second year. So yeah, it's my team. So we we have a good game and oh, shit. Probably the next day. I get I get a call from my agent that tell me I got traded to Cleveland, right after that game. So I was going back home to play him play in front of the hometown. How do you feel at this time, huh? You're playing at, at that home. time. I'm super excited. I'm going home, man. I get to play in front of all my people and all that. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a dream to play in the NBA at home in front of everybody. You think it's a dream. You think that's what you want to do, but hindsight, that ain't something that I that I would want to do. That I wanted to do. Like right. once you go home, <laughs> everybody's coming out. Everybody, all your cousins, your uncles, your your best friends, your new best friends, this that, cuz this, give me that, brother this, blah 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 blah. So it was so a lot of distractions that um that led to coming home and playing for your hometown. So it it seemed like it would be fun, but it's mm. better to play away so you don't have as many distractions. Right, and then, right. Um, we we started up 
Dwan Wagner was uh was injured at the beginning of the year, so I was able to play some some significant minutes. First game was versus uh, Sacramento Kings. That was with Vlade and Chris Webber and Mike Bibby and Doug Chris, you know what I'm saying? They stacked team LeBron's first game in Sacramento. The gym sold out. The media is going crazy. Everything is just crazy. Like everything is crazy. And we ended up losing, but I had I had a really good game. I think I hit like six threes, which was a record until probably last year or something like that. The, for the most threes when you switch teams. And, um, then we, we played like two or three more games, and DeWan Wagner came back. He was back from his injury. And uh, then, and that just took my minutes from, from here all the way down to pretty much nothing. Mm, that's crazy because both you, you and Bron are from Ohio. You guys are both yep. Ohio guys, yep. huh? both Ohio guys. Mm, that's so that wild. took me to nothing. So we, I still was, you know, saying still practicing everything like that. Trade deadline is coming up in March, sometime in March. A couple of teams are inquiring about me, but the Cavs saying no. We, you know what I'm saying this is, we, he's he's gonna be part of our future. We wanna we wanna keep him around. We want him to be here, so we're not we're not gonna trade him. Mm. So nothing like that. So once once we come to another another time is if you get waived for playoffs. So if you get waived before, let's say March first. If you get way before March 1st, you can go to any team you want to go to. So, meanwhile, the whole time the teams are trying to trade for you, whatever, whatever, but the Cavs are telling me they're going to keep me. This is what – they're not going to trade me. This is what we're going to do. March 1st hits. If you get waived after March 1st, you can't go to any playoff team. You only can go to a team that's not going to make the playoffs. That's, that's crazy. A, that's a rule in the NBA. So, that's a stupid rule. Yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So, March 1st comes. I get a call. I've been waived that that very next day. So if I if they had to waive me the day before or traded somebody traded for me, I could I could have went to wherever I wanted to go and played in the playoffs. Mm. But they waived me after March first for whatever reason. I'll never I still won't understand it. And then I couldn't. That was it. I couldn't I couldn't go to the, to the playoff to a playoff team. So I ended up going to to Golden State to finish the to finish the to finish my season. Mm. How how was that over there? Who who's who's over there with you in uh, Golden State? Golden State was uh Was that Baron Davis and him? Nuh-uh. This was Speedy, um, Dunleavy, Michael mm-hmm. Petrus, Jason Richardson, okay. Calvert Chaney, those 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 guys. Yeah. A lot, a lot of veterans. It, it was it was cool, you know what I mean? But you're coming in as a new guy on a ten day contract, you don't get you don't you don't do too much to vibe and they don't really know you all like that. So played my first ten day. They they gave me another ten day to be on the team and then after that second ten day the rule is either you got to sign them for the rest of the year or you got to cut them. Mm. So we played, we played in Boston. No, we played in Philly. We played in Philly, and they let me know, like, JR, this is going to be your last game. We're not going to sign you for the remainder of the season. So, okay, we played in Philly. I flew back home to Cleveland. They had to go to – Golden State had to go to Boston, and then they was going to come play Cleveland. They go to Boston. Every Johnson gets hurt. I pick up my phone because somebody's calling. My agent called me. Go to state, want to sign you for the rest of the season. Avery Johnson got hurt, and they're coming to Cleveland to play. So, just meet them down at the arena. <laughs> so, <laughs> now I'm playing against the team that waved me, yeah. with the team that just cut me to bring me in, brought me back <laughs> to play the real minutes now because the point guard just got hurt. Which is, that is man, crazy. It's, it's a wild story. It's crazy. At least you didn't have to fly back to uh, Oakland, though. You right, know, just right, right there. Right, right. Like I had, right. I just came right. I flew Philly, Philly here, and it took the same. I hadn't even unpacked my bags. It's the same bags. Went down there That's and met him in the hotel for the rest of the rest of the season out there in Oakland. That is wild. So you finished the whole year, and I, I so was that the last year for you? That in, was in the, the last league? year. They they had the expansion draft. The Bobcats drafted me in the expansion draft, so I thought I was going to be playing for the Bobcats, but I was told not to not to report for summer league. So I went to I went and played summer league for the Raptors, and the assistant coach for the Raptors was my assistant coach at Boston. Hmm. Um. And uh, this was with Chris. This was with was I think it was Bosch. Chris yeah, that, this was Bosch. This was but this was Bosch's year. So we played. I played that summer league, and then I got a lucrative offer overseas, and uh, I accepted it. I went. I went overseas. I knew I was gonna play. And I, I'm saying I hadn't played in uh, probably like a year, probably about a year, because with the Cavs, I played the first three games. After that, I didn't play. Mm. I, barely, I barely practiced. So I said, man, I want to play. Like I, I love the game. The NBA is great, but. I want to play basketball. But but come on, that deal, that deal right. though. Yeah, I had to, had to, had to take that it. deal. At, at that time, you don't really understand numbers. You just hear it. And you be like, oh man, what what was I thinking about? Yeah. So I went over there, and then I, I then I stayed over there for the next what was it, thirteen years, twelve, thirteen years. 
and, and that time, like, I just like, man. yeah, yeah, I got to saw, I get, to see, I got to saw, got to see everything. All the so the, the first team that the first team that signed you, where was that team? On the Caja Malaga. Where Spain. where was that? Spain or okay. Spain? Yeah. That's yeah. For, that, is that the first league? Yeah, yep. okay. That's probably the that's probably the best at that time. It was the best league after the NBA hmm. as far as far as basketball and talent. A lot of those guys that I played with came over to the NBA. With Calderon, he was in Toronto. Garbajosa, he was on my yeah. team. He was in Toronto. Yeah. So, I couldn't uh, stand that dude, man. I, I, did not, I was not, I was not a fan of that dude. I didn't even yeah, know how he played in the league, game, man. It's a different type of game. Bro. Yeah, it's yeah. Different. He probably still playing with that old man game. The old man, yeah. That slow head fake, <laughs> get a little flop and finish. You know, in, in yeah. Spain, he he wanted the best when he was in Spain. So he got every call, anything he wanted. He was he was the man. So it was, we had a we had a good year. We had a really good year that year. We had a good team. Mm. What 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 was one of the things that kept you motivated, like? to keep playing. So you said you played 13 years yeah. in Europe. That's a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. I think the most I think the most that I've seen from a guy might have been like 10 maybe. Mm -hmm. And he and he actually came back to Canada after like 8 years he started playing in Canada in the Canadian league over here. So right. it was okay cuz he was a, he was around his family, right? right. What, was, what was something that kept you motivated to keep playing after 13 years, man? Just my love for the game, man. I just I'm saying I I put so much into it growing up to get to the position I was at. That you know what I'm saying I couldn't take a step back, or I didn't want to not work because that's that's what my identity was to, mm -hmm. to everybody. Like he's a hard worker, he does this, he's a great teammate, like that. So that was my motivation, just to to stay to stay to keep that identity when I was young. And then as I got older, to like years nine, ten, eleven, twelve, that's now I'm trying to mold the young Americans that that's on the teams that I that I go to, trying to teach them the game, trying to help them as much as I can, but still be a role model for them. So that, that really kept me going. And they kept me young. They always wanted to play one-on-one -on -one and shooting contests. Which I, <laughs> you know, I never lost in them. That's them, them type of things that they keep you going. Plus my love is just I love right. the game so much, man. And then I just, you, you think about how much you put in and you never want to stop playing until it's that, until you just have to stop playing. Mm, so, so it's crazy. Like, did you guys win any championships while you're in Europe? We won mm -hmm. my first year. We won a thing called the King's cup. It's like the Spanish league. They have a um, they have a mid season championship and the end of the season championship. And the mid season playing the play the exact same way. You got eight teams. Uh, you win, you move on, you lose, you you're out one game. And we won, we won that. And that was the first time in a long time that they had won the Kings Cup there. And that was the only championship that I won. I made it to the final four a couple of times in this thing called the Euro Challenge. I made it to the finals and I ended up losing in all those. So. Mm. Okay, so someone wanted to ask another question. What was uh, the favorite city that you played in? Man? It depends on which way you're trying to ask that question. Is the favorite city for basketball? The favorite city for nightlife? Favorite city for food? Like everybody. What was your favorite city pitches. that you played for? Spain. It uh, Milan, Milan. Is my favorite city. Yeah, uh, they had they had everything. They had the organization, which was Emporio Armani. You know what I mean? It don't get too much better than him. And then the city was great. Everybody spoke English. The food was great. The weather was great. Nightlife was good. You know what I'm saying? Everything was – and they took care of you. Apartment, everything was good. So it was it, – that's that's definitely my favorite city. Did, did you ever have issues, like, with, with them paying you, man? Because I know, I know that's a, a big thing with a lot of European players. You know, they always, yeah, yeah, yeah. always gotta, complain about not getting paid on time. Careful. You got to be real careful with that. Um, I, My biggest problem I had probably was – in the middle of my career, when I went, when I went over to Russia, I had um, I had a problem where I was behind like three months. You know, you get paid once a month, and mm. you're behind three months. But after after I think after one month, they behind you're allowed to leave or you're allowed to sit out. But you know, what I'm saying they telling you they're gonna pay you, so I'm giving the benefit of the doubt. I got it. You know, what I'm saying I'm, I got that type of heart. I'm I look at you like, all right, you tell me this, cool. And then it, it got to four months. I said, all right, this is it. I I gotta go. Like I'm telling my agent, like I'm not playing. I'm not practicing. I'm not doing nothing. So they paid me something. But mm. the whole time, the coaches wasn't getting paid. Some of the other players weren't getting paid. Like, JR, you got to, I'm saying, bear with us. We not getting paid either. I said, I understand that completely. But you're home. Like, you you go home to your family. You have, I'm going home to an apartment by myself with nothing. Yeah. The only reason I'm over here is, is to get paid to play basketball. Like, I could be at home doing something different. And, exactly. Uh, I ended up staying. They talked me into staying. And then... They gave me off. They ended up giving me off for a month that they that they were behind, and then this and then my last year, last 
second to last year, and Turkey had the same problem. And then I left after that first month. Told him I was leaving, and I never got that money. That's never crazy. Got paid. That's wild, man. So, yeah, after, so. so after 13 years, man, you you what what was the driving force to make you retire? What what was it that said you said okay, this is it for me, man? Huh? They it was pretty much the the teams. It wasn't me because I mean, like right now, I still can go over there and I, I and I think I can contribute because I take care of myself and take care of my body. It's just the teams that that mentality over there is like all they see is your age. Like they see I'm born in 1980. Like oh, he's old. Like over here, if you can hoop. You can hoop. They don't care how old you are. If you can hoop, you can perform. You are gonna get on the court over there. It's different. In mm. my, my year in Turkey, and after that year, I, I I didn't understand it, but I understood how they thought. Cause that year in Turkey, I played forty minutes a game over there. Two twenty minutes, um, forty That's minutes, two ten minute quarter, four ten minute quarters. You played so the whole game. I averaged thirty nine minutes and twenty seconds a game with my Turkish coach over there. I led the league in assists. And then for the second half of the season, I led the league in assists and scoring. Mm. So that next year coming, now I'm about to turn 36 or 37. I can't remember which one. I'm like, all right, somebody about to throw some stuff at me. And it was like everything that kept coming back was, ah, oh, we on, he's going to be 37 this year. We don't know if he's going to be able to perform at a high level. Like, damn, two mm. months ago, I was just averaging 39 minutes a game. Like, yeah, what yeah. you mean? What's been changed in two months? <laughs> like, I'm leading the league in assists and I'm second in scoring or whatever it was. What has changed that make you think that three you months ago do the same thing? The skill, yeah, and that was just their mindset and everybody. And then and they all was saying like, "Ah, he, uh, he's born in eighty. We on. He about to be thirty-seven. He's born in eighty. That's all. That's all I heard. So it wasn't necessarily me retiring, saying, "All right, my body can't take it no more. I just don't mm. feel like myself." It was like, "I'm sick of the bullshit. I don't want to keep hearing this trash that they telling me." When you see when you see the guys go over there, or we want a twenty three year old who can't do couldn't do nothing with me. Exactly. He's twenty three. So, yeah. And then they end up cutting him two months later. You know what I mean? That and, don't make no sense. Like it don't make it don't make no sense, but that's just that mentality over there, that mindset. Wow. So so after now thirteen years you retire. was coaching something that you always wanted to do, man? I never or? wanted to do coaching. I didn't think I didn't think that I would be good at coaching. I mean mm. just not because I don't know the game. It's just because I, I was that guy at the end of the bench that didn't get a second. I, I didn't think that I could beat that coach. Like, man, he come to practice every single day, work hard. But yeah, I, I just can't put him in the game. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I would think I would see the game different because I was a player and things like that. But at, during the summers, uh, my one of the guys that played high school ball with me, Jeremy Holmes, he was coaching at the high school. And he'd invite us down to come play with his kids, like five on five, the the the, the men versus kids and whatever. And I got into it to talking to him, you know what I'm saying, coaching a little bit during that. And I was like, man, this might be might be something I can do. I might seem really be able to to really be able to give back and help some kids become ball players and become young men. And um well last year, coach from St. Bonaventure, um Joe Lombardi, he coached at a D two school called IUP. And, you know what I'm saying? I was I inquired like, Coach, I'm I'm thinking about getting some coaching. He was like, Well, I don't have any position, but you can come volunteer. I give you a spot on the bench. You can be a volunteer coach. I said, I mean, I, that's all I'm asking for. I just want to experience it. And I had a great time with them for like two months. We won a, we won the championship of the league. We got rings. The kids took to me really well. Mm. They, they listened to what I said. They locked in when I was talking. Like you can see how they look at you and look in your eyes. And, right. And I got his feedback, and he was like, Man, you you would be a great coach just because how how kids respond to you the way you talk to them, the way you present yourself and present the things that you're trying to tell them, they can, they listen and, and they do it. He was like, man, I really think you can be a, a really good coach. And I had turned down the job that I have now the year before that because I, that's when I thought, man, I don't know if I can do it. And then right. they, they offered me the job again. It came it came available again that very next year because they were unhappy with the coach that they had took. Mm. And, 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 and then I jumped on it immediately. And then it's going back to my alma mater, going back home. So it was pretty much a no-brainer for me. That's crazy. That is crazy. So you got to coach your alma mater, man. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's that's amazing. And this is your second year, or your this will be this will be my second year coming, coming up. Last coming year, up, my first my very first year. Yeah, because I've been I you know I always pay attention. I always you know sweet. I always see what he's doing, and I know yeah. he was I know he was coaching as well. Yeah, yeah. So, he's, the, you know, the head, yeah. he's the head assistant now. He was doing JV Virginia mm. varsity. He was an assistant. Now he's my head assistant up up uh on the varsity. Wow, so you guys got a lot of athletes that came out of out of the heights, though, right? Yeah, man, we got a lot. 
a lot. You guys, don't, of, you guys got that, that football player. What's his name? Um, Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he played basketball too. He was the only freshman to start varsity under the, uh, our old deceased coach Jim Capaletti. He was the only freshman to ever start varsity, so he can That's he crazy. can hoop too. He's a he's like a real athlete. Yeah, because you know I always I always pay attention to all the stuff that you guys do, and I seen like you guys. I don't know if it was like uh, some type of uh, homecoming or something where everybody went back or, or something like that, and I seen all those guys. Yeah, I've seen yeah, all yeah. those guys. I, I forget the other dude's name. He, he's the, the, the vodka dude. Uh, the vodka jock. I forget jock, his name. Jock, jock, jock Evans. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah he man. Was a year, he was a year behind me, and I think Trav was, was two or two or three years. No, it might might have been more than that. Tra- yeah, Trav was way more than that. He way younger than me. But it's such yeah. a small world. I went to go speak at Roxborough, which was my – middle school alma mater and he was in one of the classes man he was like man when you came to talk to us that one day you know i'm saying you you made my day but he was a little kid then i was in the nba so i was he had, you know what I'm saying? he looked up to me like oh man that's nba player right there and now talking to him now we go out and we see each other it's crazy to hear that story like now i mean he's the best nfl tight end best tight end in the nfl right now it's that's just crazy, crazy how small the world is and you don't know who you affect and how you affect them that's mm. people somebody's always watching man you never know you never know who you who you touching or who you affecting by the things that you say or by the things that you do. That's why you got to do it. You always got to do things the right way, man, regardless, yeah. of, regardless of the situation. You do it the right way, good things happen. Facts. That's wild, man. That is crazy, brother. I, I, I appreciate you, brother. Oh, yeah. I really, I really, I really, I really do, me, man. man. This, this, yeah. is, this is legendary, man, because, you know, I always try to do a lot of guests that people ask for. And, mm-hmm. you know, people are inquiring about you, so... This is why I was so pressured to get you on. Like, yeah, yo, yeah. I'm not letting you get out of this, bro. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you gonna get on this show. You yeah, you're gonna get on this show, right? <laughs> you know, because the people, the people want to know, and it's crazy because I learned, I learned some stuff today, mm-hmm. and I've been knowing you so long. I've been knowing you 20 years, right? And I met, I knew, you know, I found out some stuff about you that I didn't know today, right? So, so that's good for me as well, man. But you know, I do appreciate you, brother, taking your time. You know what I mean? Um. You're supporting the brand. I appreciate that, you know. Yeah. I hope one day when Corona and everything is all done, you can actually come on the show physically. Okay. And we sit down okay. and wrap it up again. Because I know, you know, this is like second home to you, brother. Right, right. I always need me a good and, reason to get back up there, man. Yeah. Perfect reason to get on out <laughs> yeah. <there. laughs> and, you know, we, we always have a good time when you come out here, man. So, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? I, I, I really appreciate you for the time that you took and the interview, brother. You know, much love and respect. You know, we always going to support you. You know, Cleveland is like, you know, it's like home for us, too. You know what I mean? We always show love. We always show love to you guys out in Cleveland, man. So, you know what I mean? Whatever you're doing, you know, I'm always going to be supporting, you know, and rooting for you guys, you and Sweets, and all the rest of the gangs, man. I'm the same way, man. You know, anytime anytime you need me for anything, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, we... we, we got to get it, man, because it's like your, your story is so incredible, man. And, and mm-hmm. you know, the resilience and everything that it took for you to get to where you were going, man. Like, right. it's right. it's so incredible. And, yeah. you know, and I always try to teach a lot of the kids that I'm around, like, yo, if you put that work in, you can do it. Yep. You just got to believe. And, you know, you, you are a That's perfect example, thing. man. Yeah, That's you are a perfect you example. Gotta, you got to believe in that person. You look at it in, in the mirror. Everybody yeah. can tell you whatever they want to tell you, but you got to believe like <laughs> Like I said, I really, I really was a nobody. Like I went from nothing. I was a nobody. Nobody knew Jr. Like I was the last person that anybody would expect to be doing, playing professionally or playing at, at the next level. But it's just that, uh, it's just that continuous work, that continuous grind to be doing stuff when, when somebody isn't doing it. So that's mm-hmm. how you, that's how you, that's how you get above everybody, man. That's why we don't tell the kids all the time. Like everybody works out, everybody trains. That's yep. I mean, everybody does that. The ones that make it higher is. When that one person is done training, what are you gonna do? Exactly. To build yourself up to take over that spot or to <laughs> become a better player than that. Cause right. it's easy to just work out when your coach say, "Hey, come in here at nine o'clock." All right, coach, I'll be there. <laughs> park, cause you got to be there. Yeah. Now, what about at one o'clock when the sun blazes? You go to the park by yourself and you playing on the concrete, trying to get better. You know what I'm saying? Those are, that's the hard part. That's what makes yeah. players really, really good. And that's why I try to teach my guys, man. You got to go hard all the time. I don't care who who's across from you. Go hard. It could be my son who's six. If he oh. want to play you one-on-one, destroy him. Because 